What's up everybody? Loki! That's what's up, the brand new Disney Plus MCU series that just dropped earlier this week, which I didn't get a chance to watch as soon as the episode itself dropped. I mentioned this in my live reaction video. I watched it eventually and needed a couple of days to, you know, work on doing this review because uh, it's a complicated one. It's definitely a complicated one. It's not like WandaVision or um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier where I was able to connect with it right away. I immediately got where the show wanted to go and what the intention was and what the idea was right away. Uh, it didn't happen with me with this show. It really only just slowly started to hit me towards the end. But let's just start about the episode itself. Uh, the first episode, uh, obviously we're picking up right when uh, Avengers Endgame uh, left off with the character of Loki, this specific uh, version of Loki, 2012's Loki, and right away we get uh, the uh, the answer of where did he go? To the Gobi Desert in Mongolia, and was immediately captured by uh, the TVA, the Time Variance Agency, and was uh, sent to processing. One of my favorite parts of the episode, as a matter of fact, the long DMV style uh, processing of just asking him questions, Please sign here, taking off the clothes. It, it was very... I can't believe I, I'm saying this when con in the context of the MCU, but it was very Doctor Who-ish. It very it felt like um, Doctor Who humor and style and sensibilities with the robot that just takes off the clothes because you can't walk into the TVA wearing what you were wearing before that and the whole uh, sign, sign this document to... Uh, uh, confirm that this is everything you ever said, and every time he, time he says something else, there's another extra paper he needs to sign. And that was I found that to be quite hilarious and fun, and it, it fits within the MCU's um, humor and such. And I also especially appreciated the uh, big explainer vision uh, stuff, which you know it's a term that I I, I kind of use and I borrowed from someone else. But uh, the explain no vision part with the, uh, uh, the, the, the I had very some I, I've seen this uh, comparison be made a lot. It, it was very much Mr. DNA uh, reminiscent uh, from uh, the original Jurassic Park uh, movie. It was very much like D Mr. DNA in that uh, in that context, and also it was vo the Miss Minutes was voiced by uh, the incredible, amazing Tara Strong. So, uh, yeah, I always appreciate he hearing her voice in anything. And first of all, she's in the MCU now, so I, I guess that's a pl big plus. And I'm curious to see if we'll see more of uh, Miss Minutes uh, later down the road in, in this show. And obviously, uh, Loki is on trial for something he's not even aware he did, which, I mean, kind of makes you think, doesn't it? If you ever, uh, going off of what uh, the video said with Miss Minutes, what if you take the wrong turn in real life and accidentally uh, turn the entire timeline on his head and end up in the TVA on trial for something you didn't even know you weren't supposed to do. Like, what happens then? What, 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 how, where does your brain go in that moment? And obviously Loki, thinking he's uh, the all-powerful god of mischief, tries to escape. He clearly fails, which then we get the introduction of Owen Wilson's character, uh, Mobius, who immediately tries to recruit him. We see a little exchange with him, with Mobius and uh, Dugu and Bathara's character. Clearly, there's some sort of uh, shared history with these two, and they they're both they they know more than they're letting on. Especially Mobius, because we get to see him more in this episode. And obviously, one of my biggest questions going into this show was how were they going to handle this version of Loki because remember this is not the Loki that died at the end of Endgame it's a different Loki this Loki didn't go through the didn't experience the death of his mom the death of his adopted father uh, everything that happened in Ragnarok he didn't uh, have all of that that what happened in, on Sakaar None of that really happened to this version of Loki yet, and uh, we pretty much get to see it straight away. Like, Mobius kind of shows him both his past failures and his future failures, and really kind of puts him, in, in, him into perspective. Which, storytelling-wise, it's not something you should do. Like, it's not... you, you can't take a character and show, show them what their entire life is all about, because... Even in this episode, he says to Loki, 
that basically his entire reason for existing is to fail in order to lift other people up. Remember, he's the main reason why the Avengers formed in the first place. His death also what re is what really motivated um, Thor to get his revenge on Thanos uh, later in life. And uh, so, yeah, all, all that uh, kind of stuff. And we get to, to learn some interesting histories about him and Thor. Apparently, he was D.B. Cooper for some reason. And apparently, him and Thor have been messing with Midgard for longer than they were letting on, which is kind of an interesting uh, little tidbit. But then, obviously, we get the, the moment when uh, he sees all the other Infinity Stones and drawers, which I guess kind of means that the Infinity Stones are kind of pointless now after seeing that. Now, obviously, we've had... 20 something movies with the Infinity Stones, but now they're just kind of irrelevant, which is it's letting us know that, yeah, um, what, what, oh, what, what, what we had here with the Infinity Stones, yeah, wiping out half of human, half of uh, the universe, yeah, that was cute. What we've got, uh, coming up is gonna be so much bigger that you weren't even expecting it, you, you couldn't even imagine it, so, uh, I'm very excited for that. But yeah, uh, like I said, it's putting Loki in his place. It's putting him in a different perspective because he's used to be to feeling like a god amongst men. And we see that even with this version of Loki in uh, 2012's Avengers going to what is clearly not Germany, but uh, going to fake Germany and uh, sort of trying to subjugate um, uh, the human population and uh, being stopped obviously by the Avengers. He sees himself as a god. He literally thinks he's a god. Even in the TVA processing, he's like, I'm so above all these people. Why Why am I being uh, forced to go through with this? And then he realizes just how tiny he is compared to the wider spectrum of things, the big picture. Now, obviously, this could be just Loki being Loki, you know, the god of mischief, doing whatever he, uh, comes naturally. But, uh, yeah. I'm willing to think that there's definitely something beneath the surface and uh, I think he's gonna play along for as long as uh, it's going to suit him. I definitely can see uh, a scenario in which the TVA are the real bad guys and not this other fake ver other ver variant of Loki. I definitely can see a scenario where the TVA end up being the, the real secret bad guys and the whole controlling people's destiny and knowing exactly what's going to happen and making sure everyone sticks on the right path because usually in these kind of these kinds of situations don't really pan out the way uh, you want them to so I'm just asking, asking myself is Loki eventually going to uncover a secret plot and he's going to recruit uh, Mobius and all some of the other uh, members from the uh, TVA onto his side to fight against the timekeepers, against the TVA, uh, to sort of unravel this whole organization. That's what eventually going to lead to the mo multiverse of madness in the upcoming Doctor Strange movie. Is Loki go basically going to be in the Doctor Strange movie? Is all of this just a setup for the next phase of the MCU? I'm very excited to have the answers to these questions. Now, obviously, this is just speculations and predictions. Uh, no need to uh, get too attached to them, you know, we, also, we always say speculate responsibly, responsibly, but fortunately, unlike WandaVision or Falcon and Winter Soldier, I'm getting all these uh, theories and uh, ideas straight off the bat, and I can't wait to see whether or not these uh, ideas of mine are going to pan out. But yeah, I'm excited to see Loki versus Loki, which is apparently what we're going to get further down the series. Now, I believe this is going to be the shortest of these new MCU uh, shows. I think we only have five more episodes left, but uh, I'm with them till, till the end of the line, as they say. I'm, I'm, I, I'm curious to see where this uh, ride goes. So these are just my quick thoughts on the pilot episode of uh, Loki. I can't wait to see the second episode. Hopefully I can watch it on time this time around, but uh, yeah, that's basically all I have to say for now. And uh, I'm still trying to work on a good outro for these uh, these uh, videos. So let me just try this. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, let me know your, you, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And until next time, everybody, ne always remember to be burdened with gr glorious purpose. Still kind of working on that one, but I'm gonna hopefully I'll, I'll figure it out by the time the show the, this uh, season ends. See you later, everybody. Hello again, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed this video, because I really enjoyed making it. So, if you like what you've seen here, please remember to like, 
share, comment, and subscribe for more awesome content like this. So, until next time, guys, I'll see you guys next time.